everybody and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews, I'm just a regular dude. Where I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I also review YouTube channels. Basically I just do whatever the hell I want. Today I'm going to do a, a video called 8 Extreme Haunted Houses That Take It Way Too Far. I watched a documentary on some of these. It was on Netflix. It was a year or two ago. It's really, really good. You should check it out. I can't remember the title of it. If I do, I'll post it in the description down below. So let's check this out. It's from the channel Mr. Nightmare. Number 8, Dead of Night. Dead of Night was an attraction on Long Island which had one of the most horrifying haunt openings many had ever seen. Everyone waited in lines listening to a calming, we are here for your protection recording. Everything will be okay. You are safe. We are here to protect you and care for you. We love you. Nothing is real. All is well. Which was interrupted at intervals by an air raid siren and men in gas masks and suits who each grabbed an unsuspecting patron and dragged them into the haunt. However, you'd be lucky if you were dragged in. Some people were zipped into body bags and some were thrown over actors' shoulders and carried inside. The haunt opened with this very strong abduction scenario then the focus shifted to humiliation, which included the smearing of strange substances on patrons' faces and even hitting people in the face with large and painfully heavy objects, going as far as fake genitalia. Dead of Night has been discontinued from the Chamber of Horrors this past year. Number 7, Scarehouse The Basement The Basement at Scarehouse is an intense, immersive, and interactive experience inside a nearly 100-year-old historic and apparently actually haunted building. You may enter in pairs or alone, though odds are not many people will be entering this place alone. The actors in this haunted house are incredibly convincing, and there's a lot of improvisation and dialogue as you make your way through each scene of your own personal horror movie. It's not possible to make it from start to end without coming into contact and having to deal with the actors playing with you for a while. There is extreme physical contact, sexual undertones, real electric shock, religious themes, and much more. Okay, I would, like most on this list, you must sign well. a waiver before entering. The basement can get so disturbing that the attraction responsibly has a safe word to yell out if a patron happens to feel violated or too uncomfortable. Number six, the cult. The cult was an well. At least they have a safe word, because if they didn't have a safe word, then it would be a little bit more scary. But I don't deal with electricity, electricity very well. So if I was shocked, no, I wouldn't like that. Not even a little bit. I can't even handle a carpet shock. It freaks me out. An attraction located in North Conway, New Hampshire. The cult has been called the ultimate in terror only for the diehard fans of true horror, for those who want the true experience of real life terror to test your fears. It is an hour long attraction and you must walk through alone, absolutely no groups allowed. Going through it you would encounter violent and sexual situations and would be touched many times. Many, many times. As the nervous patrons meet a man before entering the attraction who asks if they have any problems with darkness, heights, claustrophobia, eels, rats, bugs, needles, or being fully submerged in water, one would have to wonder, what am I getting myself into? Patrons are given a red card on a lanyard. If one decides the experience is too much, they can give up their safety pass and it will be over. And then, one by one, patrons would be asked to step into a chairlift that leads to a dirt path, which would then lead to a cabin where you would meet a man who would shove you into a booth, yell at you, spray unknown liquids in your mouth, 
throw a bag over your head and then carry you outside where the simulated torture continues. It doesn't sound simulated, on, it sounds it like actual torture. Throughout the attraction you would encounter live animals, for instance having cockroaches crawl over you, forced edibles, for instance being forced to drink animal urine, extreme violence, extreme sexual violence, and much more. The cult has been closed since 2013. Number 5. Blackout Haunted House. This haunted house has... Whatever happened to just a normal haunted house where you walk through and there's people jump out and scare you and that's about it. People are always looking for something more and more extreme and some of these do definitely take it too far and I can see why some of them get closed down. I'm surprised they don't get lawsuits. They must have to like sign waivers or something before they go in. I don't know. It features extreme violence, full frontal nudity, hey. sexual situations, forced edibles, submersion in water, physical contact, and you must enter alone. Patrons have been abducted in vans, faux waterboarded, and even rolled naked in a sheet of plastic and forced to walk barefoot down a used condom covered hallway. Said hallway would lead to a sexual assault scene with a horrifically tall figure having sex with a frail okay, woman this in a blood covered be bed. Down. As a patron would pass, the tall man would stand up exposing his nude body and then make physical contact with the patron. Blackout overall relies on darkness, loud noises, violence, and sexual situations to terrify its customers. Until recently, it has been a solo only experience, but now groups are allowed. This just sounds like an excuse to me to sexually assault people. Number 4, Shocktoberfest Naked in and there. Scared they still Challenge. Have it. Shocktoberfest has proven that, along with intellectual and physical fears, haunted houses can also tap into superficial fears, namely the fear of one's own body. The Naked and Scared Challenge allows guests to traverse a dark haunted house nearly nude, literally stripping off outer layers of protection. However, after a brief battle with a local township, the creator of the attraction decided he couldn't allow guests to participate naked, so guests are now to wear the smallest underwear they could fit into. Guests of the attraction have said removing clothing makes the experience more intrusive, personal, and intimate. Employees use special techniques and scare devices, for example water and air blasts among others, to heighten the experience. Coupled with near freezing fall weather, it becomes a rush for those who are daring enough to go through in their underwear. When patrons have that psychological layer of protection removed, it's a whole new yeah, sense that's I'm available sure. to be entertained and exploited. Number three. Exploited is the main word there. Freakling Bros Victim Experience 3. This Las Vegas attraction features partial nudity, submersion in water, electric shock, and extreme physical contact. The victim experience is incredibly intense and you must go through alone. Patrons will experience extreme physical contact, light torture, simulated drowning, and more. One patron said he watched a camouflaged attacker appear out of nowhere, grab his colleague by the foot, then knock her down and drag her away down a long hallway. He was left alone in the darkness until the attacker came back for him and threw him over his shoulder. Patrons will experience real electric shock as well as the feeling of near drowning as they are submerged underwater. As the title of the attraction suggests, once you enter, you are a victim. You will experience pain, you will be tied up, and you may be carried and thrown. Freakling Brothers actually runs three haunted houses every year, Castle Vampire, Circus of Horrors, and Gates of Hell. The Gates of Hell became one of the first haunted houses in the country to be R-rated due to graphic content and the requirement of patrons to be over 18 and sign a waiver. The victim experience takes place in the gates of hell, and it simulates what it would be believed to be like to die and actually go to hell. Without giving too much away, victims are put in several scenes where they are touched, forced to get down on their knees, and subjected to things that anyone would find shocking. Number 2. The Raven See this, some of these, most of these, actually look to me just like an excuse for perverts to do whatever they want to do. 
I mean, this is taking it too far. I, I believe, I like being scared and stuff like that up to a point. This is just too much. Let me know what you think. Actually, to each their own, I guess. I wouldn't go into one of these places myself. I, I think I said earlier I would go in alone, but nah, not one of these. I wouldn't do it. Raven's Nest. One of the lesser known extreme haunted houses, the Raven's Nest has been closed since 2009. It had been closed after it was deemed as too extreme by the town. The Raven's Nest featured actors who were paid to induce pain on the patrons, as well as other humiliating methods of torture. The owner Mike McMahon would hire mostly larger, more intimidating actors who would be capable of easily picking up, tying, or shoving patrons. Visitors would also be kicked to the floor and forced to do things like lick the ground, eat disgusting foods and liquids off the floor, and even have actors stick their fingers down patrons' throats to induce vomiting. The attraction also played with claustrophobia, having patrons crawl through air vents filled with real cockroaches and spiders, I, I as well as constant tight and cramped rooms and pathways. There was no safe word, which may have been a small factor in the eventual closing of the Raven's Nest. Number 1. McCamey Manor Talking about claustrophobia, I remember when I was, uh, I was probably like junior high school age, I went with my dad in his semi in his truck for one whole summer. I just went with him for like three or four different trips right in a row. <clears throat> and he would have to, when we would pull over to sleep or anything like that, he ended up having to sleep in the seats in the front and I would get back in the sleeper or I would have to sleep on the outside of the sleeper so that I could lay my leg out of it. I couldn't be up against the wall. I would freak out because I, it's too tight and I just couldn't move. It had just completely freaked me out. So he actually, he slept on over the steering wheel a few times, but then he was like, no, I gotta get back there. You just take the outside. And I was fine with that, but I had to dangle my leg outside of the sleeper. Now I could sleep back in the sleeper by myself, but I couldn't be up against the wall. I just got, it freaked me out. It was like being in a coffin. This San Diego attraction shouldn't even be in the same category as regular haunted house attractions. This extreme haunt tops this list because it can use scare tactics that are off limits to professional attractions. It also can't be said that what goes on in this place is safe. Okay, she's asking to go out. Participants are covered in blood forced to eat disgusting things, threatened with power tools, stuffed in a clothes dryer, submerged in water, physically assaulted, forced to drink urine, and even given an unwanted haircut. Done. Are you quitting? Safe and... I'm quitting. No, you're not. Pick her up here. Pick her up here. <laughs> Participants often leave covered in blood, commonly their own, and Fuck so far that. nobody has made it through Gene, the end. such language. There is no safe word, and they only pull the plug when medically necessary. This house plays with people's fears of claustrophobia, with tight spaces and corridors, people's fears of spiders, with restrained victims having up to or even more than four tarantulas crawling over their faces, people's fears of clowns, and just about anything else you could think of. Perhaps one of the more shocking parts is that the experience goes on for about five to eight hours, maybe hence why nobody's made it through to the end yet. The McCamey Manor House is for extreme horror lovers only who wish to experience what true terror or gross out torture feels like, but apparently there are a lot of people who wish to experience it, as there's a waiting list of more than 17,000. So this is our uh, our video to you, Russ. Wish us luck. Checking in, everybody. If we don't talk to you again, we love you all. Mwah. Bye. See you soon. See ya. Hopefully, maybe. I don't Hopefully. know. They look like big tough guys. I want to quit. I want to quit. I want to quit. Get those hands up. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? 
because I'm a big pussy, Russ. Yeah, yeah. 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 What are you doing? You guys are fucking Stop. freaking Stop. me out. Yeah. Sorry, sir. It's because you're useless. Yeah, really. Steven! Alright, I'm scared. Yeah. No, we haven't started yet. We haven't started yet. We haven't started yet! We haven't started yet! Why are you crying? Because I'm scared, Russ. Yeah, I'm glad scared. Okay, give us more water. Let me relax. You're okay. We're okay right now. Okay. Alright. Tell us what's going on, Steve. Tell us what's happening. Nobody should fucking do, do this. Yeah. Nobody should do this. I, I don't know, if you're thinking of going to one of these places, maybe you should watch this video. Or watch that one that I was talking about on Netflix. It goes into it pretty good. It's crazy to me. Why would you subject yourself to that? And there are people that like this kind of shit, too. They get off on it. On pain and being scared and everything. And like I said, I like being scared up to a point. That's taking it too far. I agree with that. Okay, time for the joke of the day. Why did the ghost go into the bar? For the booze. Probably my worst one so far. All right. I'm out. See you next time.